Hello there. Hi, video game chums. It's that time of year again, December, which means it's time to pick my top five video games of the year. This year was a great year for video games, so you may not like everything that's on my list. You may not like the order, uh, the order of the games. The order is not in my top five, believe me. Uh, but at the end of the day, I hope we can still be friends. Number five is Project Cars. <laughs> Project Cars is the most enjoyable racing game I've played in a long, 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 long time. It's a game that was created by car fans, it was like crowd developed, and you can see because it's a game that doesn't have all the licenses, but what it does have is, is a, access to a breadth of really interesting racing disciplines, uh, a host of tracks that sort of run the gambit from like small sort of tracks you can do track days on to, you know, big Formula One. Uh, famous locations. There's so many different ways to play the races. They have the career mode in there, but they also just let you kind of just fuck about and pick whatever you want uh, right out of the gate. And it also controls incredibly well. The cars feel great, they feel realistic, and it also has the best wheel support, I think, for any game that came out this year. I think it goes a long way that, like, I love playing the F1 games every year, but I thought driving in Formula A as its own in Project Cars was more fun and realistic in that game than playing the licensed F1 game. Number four on my list is Metal Gear Solid 5. <laughs> it reminds me of other games like Infamous and Just Cause. This is gonna sound so dumb, but like those are games that I just play because I just love clearing out bases. I just love going around the map and checking them all off one by one. But it's like that game, but also a game that's got like incredible emerging gameplay moments, really good combat and stealth mechanics, and also interesting missions. So it's, it kind of marries the really like dumb open world jauntiness of those type of games with like actually a good Metal Gear Solid game. And I think it's a sign of a really good game when you go back and replay levels, even if you've completed it. And although the game forces you to do that in the second half, uh, I actually really enjoyed doing that in the first half and doing all the side ops. It's, it's a great game uh, and I'm looking forward to playing more uh, over the Christmas break and 2016. My third favourite game of the year is hidden inside of this box. What could it be? So bongo bongo bongo, I don't want to leave the Congo, oh, no 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 no. My third favourite game of the year is Fallout 4, or as I like to call it, Fallout More, because it's really not all that different to Fallout 3 in New Vegas. It's a big, crazy open world full of interesting side quests, stuff to shoot, and characters to meet. Uh, but in many ways it does evolve on sort of the, I guess, the worst part of games like Fallout 3 New Vegas, number one being the shooting. Shooting in Fallout 4 is actually tons of fun, be it with pistols or automatic weapons uh, or the big boy stuff. You can actually play that game outside of bats, which is a bit of a, a, bit of a relief. And the other thing it does really well in comparison to the old games is environmental diversity. The old games, and I've gone back and played both this year, completed both this year, uh, they're very, you know, monochromatic. You know, you go north, south, east, west, in any direction, and it's not all that different. Um, the wonderful thing about Fallout 4 is that it's, a, it's, first of all, it's a huge, huge map, but there's also lots of, like, interesting stuff there. There are big cities, which, you know, fans have wanted for, for a long, long time. There's all the sort of usual wastelandy stuff up in the north. There's a really interesting, you know, nuclear area in the south. Uh, and then there's like, you know, three or four or five different towns that sort of all have their own little thing going on. It's weird thinking that it's not all that different to the third game, but it's still my third game of the year. Uh, I think that probably says as much of how much I love just Fallout as a game, uh, as much as the quality of this particular game. Yo, Chris, kick this ball. Rocket League. Underwater. I like playing football with my mates and Rocket League is essentially a game about playing football with your mates and it goes a long way when I consider that I actually haven't played much FIFA at all since Rocket League came out, it's filled that gap. It's not just a great team based game, it's not just a great like weird digital download game, it's also the best football or soccer uh, game I've played in years. It feels like when you're playing football. It feels like you are trying to manipulate this, this body instead of it being your foot or your leg, it's a car, to hit the ball at the right spot and you're, you're trying to make sure it gets the right trajectory to where it goes. And then it also has that great thing about uh, playing football which is you're one part of a th team and you want to make sure that you're like playing your part, that you're in the right position, that you're like 
you know, supporting your, your teammates. So in that way it feels more like an actual game of football or soccer than FIFA or Pro Evolution Soccer ever did. And that's why Rocket League is my second favourite game of 2015. I love exploring digital worlds that feel real. And lots of worlds look real, but they don't feel necessarily like real places. And for me, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and the world that it crafts, it's a huge, huge world feels more real than anywhere I've ever been before. Side quests seem to blend into the secondary quests, and the secondary quests seem to blend into the main quest, and then the main quest propagates out into other quests in a way that like feels completely organic. It doesn't feel like, oh, I'm making these decisions, I'm going to select A because I want B and C and D and E and F, which is the way a lot of games work, is that you're sort of planning your way ahead. In The Witcher, you're kind of making decisions from your gut because you know you can't really figure out what's going to happen next. And then you couple that with some incredibly written stories, like side quests that you may never run into, that you then suddenly you, you're like three hours deep on. And then a combat system that, at least on the harder difficulties, is super engaging and, and interesting and invites you to sort of play around with abilities and styles. And then just a massive, massive world. Like, I remember playing 40 hours in like the area around the Bloody Baron and then going out to Skellica and being like, oh my god, how long is this game? When I finished it, it, was, it turns out the game was at least 120 hours for me. I have loved it, it is the best open world role playing game I have ever played and I am not done with it and that's why that's my favourite game of 2015.